Hello, people. You know, when I start doing these shows, I always figure they're going to go one way and then something will happen and we got to switch them up. Just so you know, I'll say this one time. If you want to help support the show, donate to the show anyway, you're more than welcome. If you don't, I, I totally understand. Um, I'm not here for big, to beg for money. And also, we're going to have, uh, I'm going to go through to see who's here. And then I'm going to talk about, I was threatened today by Gene Barillo. I'm going to put up his threat. And then I'm going to reply to Gene. Then after I reply to Gene, I'm going to bring on Chicago. And we're going to talk about the great Chicago war. That's going on right now. And uh, that's our pl- And then we're going to talk about Sammy Gabbano. We have a full show, people. So I'm going to try to get this all bundled into an hour and a half. And uh, the, the, the Sammy Gabbano stuff is real good stuff because that's new stuff. Okay, let's uh, see who's here right now. Okay, we got David Cameron. How you doing? Joey Melrose. Baza da area. Victoria Young. Tony the Bum's here. Okay, Mr. Fizzle, Kenzie, Shatsy, Mummy, whatever that means. Faye, how you doing, Faye? Sons of Italy, good to see you here, my man. James Proctor, thank you for patrolling the chat like always. Deadly, how you doing, Deadly? And I know you got that. So, Uh, Paul Clinton, Uh, I'm not going to read that uh, jail one. I prefer not to. If you could change that, I would appreciate it, too. Uh, I just don't like those things in the chat. Um, Peter Pat Pat Passano, Amber Williams, Amber, how you doing? Jane Perry, good to see you here, Jane. Hey, Jane, next show I'll give you your wrench back, okay? Tommy Stiggs, one of the nice guys around here, how you doing? Okay, raise your head, how you doing? Feather Steak, Montauk. Angel Gotti, is that the Angel Gotti? Guys, run to her right now. Get her autograph. That is the Angel Gotti. That's not a fake Angel Gotti. That's the Angel Gotti. Okay. Uh, Dragonborn, Fighting Irish, Team Muscle. How you doing, my man? Jason T, I'm only going to go so far in this. Chatting with Stax. Hey, chat, uh, Stax, I didn't realize you were doing a show on Sammy today. I apologize. I don't want you to think that I was... Uh, running that off of you. I would have advertised your show. Hey, start let, hey, Stacks, let me start knowing about your show so I can put them up and I can advertise them on my channel and uh, try to help you out. It's, it'd be a lot better that way. Uh, you got my email. Just throw it to my email. I'll help you out that way the best I can. Uh, Philip uh, Jelanzi, XXX, how you doing? Uh, Ian Shepard, Delacroach. Okay, man in the box. Lee, who is Benoit? And why are you talking about his balls? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to tell you what. The other day, uh, I, I think Becky O did a show, and she kind of hit me hard on it. It was quite funny, too. Um, I'll tell you what. That is one crazy girl. Mike Slick, good to see you here, my man. I bet you never thought I'd say that, did you, Mike? Okay, Primo. David James, Upper Echelon. Okay, give me words I can't pronounce. B.J. Gill. Chai Hooker's in the house. We know who you are, Chai. Rolex and Racers. (laughs) If Stax and LC3 can get along, anything is possible in Mob 2 world. You're right. Hey, Rolex and Race Cars is one of those guys that's in, he's in chats here. He doesn't go talk no crap about nobody. He just does his thing. He's one of the good guys here. And he has a great, I, I really like his uh, page that he has on Instagram. John Hochin, Primo, for Mr. Fugazi, how you doing, my man? Yankees for life. Let's see if they sign just, uh, I'm sorry, let's see if they try, sign judge over there, Yankees for life. Okay, this, okay. here's what I want to talk about. I'm going to show you guys something I put up today. And yeah, you know, I deserve to have Gene come back and hit me. There's no doubt about that. I'm a big boy. I can handle that. But I put this up today, and uh, this is basically Gene getting caught with some hookers by his girlfriend, our ex-girlfriend. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to explain this. This is kind of pissed Gene off that I put it up. And for these women? No. Yes. Not at all. Where are they from again? 
It's fucking see through. It's like skin. It's like, it's just like, it's there. Where? Bro, come on. I told you where, right? This is insane. Mm -hmm. It's fucking see through. It's like skin. It's like, it's just like, it's there. Hey, and for these women? No. Yes. I'm sorry, Gene. I, I, I forgot I was muted. Gene is really mad at me for putting that up, and I'm going to show you what he has said to me. Recall, you fucking fat sex offender, you fucking clown. Let me tell you something, okay? You kidnapped a woman, all right? Your indictment, your discovery was a friggin' fishing around a Jolly Rancher in a van. You were luring kids into a fucking van, you sex offended fuck. All right? Now you want to come at me? I'm going to terrorize you now, you fucking fat asshole. You 60-year-old Texas crackhead. Texas baby butcher. I think he's mad at me. I'm not sure, but I think he's a little bit pissed off at me, people. I don't know. But as you know, Gene, I'll tell you what I can tell anybody. I'll tell anybody else. If you find any indictment of me ever kidnapping anybody, or if you find any child molestation in my record, every hey, Chicago Muscle is coming on. He's seen my record. He knows exactly what's on my record, people. See, this is what you do when you get these uh, rats in the corner. They pretty much, all of them, what they do, the first thing they go for is calling you child molester. They want to call you the most, uh, uh, the, the worst stuff they can call you. That's what these rats want to do. And, you know, I told Gene last summer, I said, Gene, I can't associate with you no more because of the fact that you're going down to be with this girl in Florida and it's going to be nothing but trouble. Ever since he's been down there, it's been nothing but trouble with this girl. And now, Gene, first of all, Gene, I don't think you're supposed to be threatening anybody on the Internet right now. And. If FBS gave a shit about Eugene, do you think he would have put that video up? He knows that you're not supposed to be on the internet threatening nobody. That's part of your charges right now. You're still in court, dude. So my advice to you is don't threaten anybody online. Wait until you get out of court. Wait until your charges get dropped and then threaten people. Me, I'm not going to turn you in. But there's a lot of people on here that will, Gene especially when you're threatening people. And uh, FBS doesn't give two shits about you, dude. If he did, he would have never put that video up because he knows that video can get you locked up. He knows that. You are being used, Gene. And FBS is very mad at me right now because I ragdolled him in a debate a couple days ago. All his people on that side are telling him he won, but we all know who really won that debate. He got ragdoll. I was Cubby, Kobe Covington, and uh, he was uh, Masvidal in the ring. That's how bad he got ragdolled. And, he, and he's furious about it. So he's going to use and say whatever he can to come at me. And Gene, you're being used. Now, listen, Gene, I'm going to ask you something as a man. This woman keeps putting up videos of you. What kind of man lets a woman come in over and over and over again and tape and videotape them and put them up? Who does that? A, a real man would not let a woman do that, Gene. And then you keep taking her back or she keeps coming back to you. You guys have a demented relationship. And if she puts videos out there, Gene, people are going to put them up. I'm going to put them up. You know why, Gene? Because you're relevant. If I don't put them up, somebody else will put them up. So my, all I can say to you, Gene, if you don't want these videos to be kept being put up, it's time to move on from this chick. 
I mean, all she's doing is videotaping you. What man allows a woman to do this, Gene? One day, she's put stocking charges on you. Uh, she calls the cops on you, dude. Really? You're supposed to be a street guy? You're supposed to be tough? What kind of street guy lets a woman run him like this? You know, I can understand. You know, men love women and stuff. But, you know, your love isn't love, dude. It's sick love. See, there's a difference. We all been in sick love when we went with somebody that we do not belong with. I've been in a couple of those, believe me. I'm sure that most of you people in here have been in sick love relationships. And uh, when you start letting this happen in your life, Gene, and then you start coming after me, you know how I am, Gene. If you threaten me, I'm like, okay, we can do this. But you got a whole lot more to lose than me, Gene. You're a young guy, you got a business. So I got an idea. If you're gonna, if you're gonna get hookers, don't put it in your phone. Don't brag to your friend that you've been banging some hookers. And then another thing, Gene, this is very important. Lock your phone. Please lock your phone. Unless you want her to watch, you know, she comes in there and she finds your phone and sees that you're, you know, you, you've been running with the hookers. And I know you don't have to run, run with hookers, Gene. No one's saying that. You're, you know, you can get lots of women. You've proven that. But if that night, if you were in the move for some, for some hookers, hey, God bless you. But she put it up. So here's what you do, Gene. You call her and tell her, listen, our relationship's over. We don't belong together. We're both nuts. Do that. Do yourself a favor. Now, you know me, Gene. We've known each other for about a year and a half now. If you think that I'm going to let you run over me, it's not going to happen, Gene. And if, I'm gonna, if you think I'm going to let you run me over in the name of FBS, it's definitely not going to happen. Let FBS fight his own battles. If you want to come on here and you want to debate me, Gene, just get a hold of me and let me know. If you want to call me names, call me names. If you don't want these videos up, stop having your girlfriend making them, Gene. Stop them. That's all I can say. You know how many other videos I have of you, Gene, from this girl? You're like, you're, you're a treasure trove, dude. So ask your old lady to stop. I, I don't even know what to call her old lady, but you guys, you guys should just get married, have three kids and move on in life because it's obvious you guys are identical. It ain't never going to work, but at least you can make some kids and be happy for a couple weeks. Okay, with that, people, I am going to bring on Chicago Muscle. Chicago, how you doing, my man? What's up, brother? Well, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, Gene seemed kind of mad, didn't he? Well, um, <laughs> if you put me up there like that, I can't say I blame the guy. But, uh, you know, I look at it this way. Uh, yeah, that's pretty crazy. I mean, I, you know, it's it's really none of my business what happens in Gene's life. But if you've got a woman that's taping you and putting it on the Internet all the time, I think I, I think I would probably have to make the stipulation that, honey, we fight. Please don't put my business out to the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I Honestly, I mean, it's it's funny for me and you to sit and look at and laugh at. And, uh, you know, I, I died when I seen that. I was like, holy shit, Lee, what are you doing here? <laughs> but, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it, it is kind of like if they have a relationship, I would think that, you know, she would want to respect some of the guy's privacy. You know what I mean? Well, this chick has taken uh, uh, orders of protections out on him and stalking charges. And then he opens a door for her and she gets back in there. She sends, she sent these to my email, dude. Right. And, right. And said, Can you please put these up? This guy is disturbing me. Wow. Yeah. You know, see, so see, and I would probably just, because I mean, Gene, you don't want to get the guy hemmed up and in trouble. And I can understand why he would get emotional and tell you he wanted to kill you. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm just being honest. If, if it was me and that way, oh my God, I'd be but like, you, dude. You know, you know what, Chicago? Here's the problem with that, this whole thing. I, I would have never even been doing this. 
But he went on to FBS's show and he told FBS that I uh, that I reported he couldn't do a show at FBS because um, I called up and said and told his probation department that FBS was a felony. So they both lied. So right. if, if you're going to shoot, uh, if you're going to fire a shot across my bow, expect them back. And I was disappointed that Gene went and did that, you know, tit for tat messing around. But now you're calling me a rat and you're having FBS put it out there. You know, right, so, right. So th this is my reply to that. So I don't know too much about your relationship with Gene, other than the fact that you guys were friends for, like you said, a year and a half. And yeah. I don't I don't know too much about Gene, other than the fact that. uh he gets caught slipping by his girlfriend on that camera way too much. <laughs> you know? It's almost so, like the point where you start feeling bad for him, but it's like, dude, why you keep opening the door for her? Listen, I well, yeah, I mean, I think that people have a right to their privacy. You know, it's part yeah. of the, uh, you know, it's part of the, the my belief system. And for her to put him out like that, she's as bad as him, you know. And see, she puts it up on her page. So she's actually the one making it public. And what she does is about a half hour after she puts these videos up, she takes them down. Yeah, Gene was saying, it wasn't me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, she puts them up messing with him. And then he gets a hold of her and begs her to take him down. And then they have another fight that night and she sends them to me. Right. <laughs> I, right. I mean. <laughs> and you, the shit disturber that I know you are, you can't help yourself, can you? <laughs> let me tell you something. I, let me tell you something. I would not have put those up if he didn't make that remark and lie the other day and said that I uh, that I called uh, his probation officer. He knows damn well I would never do that, and I never have to him. And if he said that he said that I did that and that I told him that uh, FBS was a felon, unless FBS is lying, which I wouldn't be surprised either. Yeah, it's it's definitely looks like it seems to be a uh, a little bit of a toxic relationship. I think Gene needs to go to relationship counseling with this girl, and you and Gene need to have a sit down and talk out your old friendship. I don't know. I mean, you know what no, I mean? No, no, no. We can't do that because uh, no, I I've made a commitment that I don't deal with these guys at all no more. Oh yeah, that's right. He's a yeah, government no. informant, isn't he? Yeah, I, you know, yeah. I don't I don't pay that much attention to that baloney, but you know, I got more pressing things that have been going on with me lately. Yes, and that's what we're going to talk about. And as for you, Gene, this ends today or you make it continue today. Okay, that's it. Oh, and I no. just want to put it out there because you know me, I am always going to come real with it. Chicago race cars and engines and that guy that you put on at the beginning of the show said he was a good guy and gave him a, a plug. He's a scumbag SoFlo supporter. Who's so that? Chicago Ro Rolex and race cars. Yeah, you, yes, know what sir. It, you know what it is, my man? Him and I have been uh, from the very beginning. They've always gotten along, and he's never come at me. Well, I don't uh, care who comes at you. He's a douchebag that supports SoFlo. So that's I. You can leave it at that. I just no, gotta. I totally if I, if I totally I'm gonna be on this show, I gotta put that out there because yeah, I, I totally I, understand and respect your respect what you're saying. Me and you have a different set of of, of uh, circumstances. You are trying to build a show, and me, I'm on the hunt. Yeah, you know what it is, too? I, you know, I started here a year and a half ago. A lot of these people are originals from me. And a lot of them have gone and said a Chicago, lot of Chicago, see what I mean? Chicago maggot is stolen valor, but it is what it is. Prove that, mouth. I want you to drop my real name in chat since you know so much about me. See, this is what I mean. He's a clown. Yeah, I would appreciate that, Rolex, if you just... Uh, Move on from it, please. I'd appreciate it if you'd meet me at that Burger King and you'll find out what I am, punk. How about that? Let's make this show exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this show, this show never has that issue, but you know what? That, one thing I know about you, my man, you're in a battle right now with these guys. Yeah, if you bring me on, you never know what's going to happen. No, I, I don't. And that's, and that's what's great about doing shows. You don't never, I don't want you to come on here and agree with me. I want you to come on here and give me your opinion. Well, and, you know, I mean, if it's yeah. just something that's, uh, you know, as simple as that, I'm just telling you, that's where the guy sits. You seen what he just said? He's, he's, you know, he's a trash bag. So I just can't come on a show and be like, uh, I didn't hear that. I heard it. 
So I just had to put that out there. And I'm sure that no, he's very, I, I totally respect that. And he's my very man, upset with that right now. But it, like I said, right meet now, me at that Burger thing. King and we can discuss that. And I want to say one thing. Rolex, if you say another another negative thing, I will uh, block you from this show today. Just so you do know that. Um, this is my guest. And uh, we are part of a team fighting some pretty nasty people. And uh, I'll just leave it like that. Okay, my man, check this out. You're coming up, uh, you know, we're talking about predators and uh, all these things coming up, dude. Are you shocked by all this stuff that you're finding out about these guys? You know, no, not really. You know, because their behavior dictates to me that there's something going on behind the scenes. And then when I got to digging on them, I found out the truth about them. And the thing that shocks me I think more than anything is people like Rolex and race cars who've seen the charges, but sits on his show and supports them anyway. That shocks me because I, I expect a man to act like a man. I agree with you 100%. You know what uh, I mean? I've never seen you support somebody after I drop paperwork like that. I've never seen, you know, anyone no. on this side of the argument support people who hurt women and that right there bothers. That's the reason why I can't come on this show and just be like, Oh, this guy's, you know, he, you promoted him right before I popped on. I got to say something and it's not to hurt your show or no, it's not hurt my show. You're saying what you want to say, dude, to to mean one of your guests. It's the, the whole point of it being to full exposure. If you support people who hurt women and hurt children, you need to be exposed, period. I'm just catching up here in the chat. No, you're absolutely right, dude. There, it, it, it dumb, it dumb, it, it's dumbfounding that these people see these charges on these people and what kind of charges they have, and they continuously go on these guys' shows and defend them. It is I mean, I look at people like, you know, a lot of people have a big beef with the rats and everything. I was put in prison for 12 years over a rat. I don't have near the animosity against somebody like that as I do someone who's hurt a woman. You know what I mean? There's a lot of surrounding circumstances, and believe me, I don't like people who tell and can't do their time. That's what happened to me. And but here's Chicago, the thing. And you know, Chicago, the funny thing about these rats, all of them have records against hitting women and hurting women. Right, exactly. They all and do. I, it's, part of their, it's part of who they are. And I cannot, okay, I can look at somebody and say, you know, I don't know the circumstances. He was maybe facing 50 years. I don't know. His kid was about to be, who knows? I could look at all these, and I don't agree with it, but if they hurt a woman, that's when I have to take exception. And, you know, a lot of people might not understand uh, my extreme hate for woman abusers. No, everybody, but, everybody should have that extreme hate. My mother, and this is where a lot of it comes from, was married to a man who beat her before my father. She was 17 years old. She got pregnant. He beat her. He beat my stepsister and was a real abusive prick to the point where she lost hearing in one ear from the beating. And I... She never could hear right. And I I remember when I was a young kid, I would have to speak up so she could hear. She was always having to get special hearing aids and all of this. So scumbags who hit women are my specialty. I got a personal beef. Well, I'm glad that, I'm glad that you shared that. Uh, that, that. That says something about you for sharing that. And it's and other was- women in my life that are very close to me have been hit and and, you know. And, and yeah. this, this type of thing. And I've always been one to stand up. If you touch a woman in front of me, we're fighting right there. So, you know. When you, when you see these guys, JC and uh, and the biggest, the biggest hypocrite phony on here, Code, who comes in there with this God and holy rolling stuff, and you see what he's been doing, the things that he said down to that girl, those nasty ass remarks, and uh, the stuff that he's done in his life. Isn't it amazing that people are still accepting him after all that? 
Well, you know, I mean, I'm a I'm a forgiving person, and you know, Lee, that I'm a Christian, and I believe that if somebody's paid their debt to society or they have uh, tried to amend their ways to where even if they hit a woman before or something like that, I think that you know, they, pe people can act and like say the woman cheated on him and he lost his mind or something. You know what I mean? There's always something that that I try and find the good in people, but what the problem is is a good man who made a mistake wouldn't want to hang around other abusers and support them and prop them up. They would want to walk away from that and maybe do some penance and do and try and help a guy like me to expose these people. You know what I mean? Oh, everybody's so worried about Chicago muscle is fake and he's doing this and he's doing that. He's not who he says he is. He hides his face, all this crap. What difference does it make? Is my message not clear? What difference does it make who I am if my message is clear? Stand up for women. Be a good guy. Don't hurt kids. And if somebody's doing those type of things, whether it be in the real world or online, take a stand against it and do what's right as a man and a woman. I want to just read one thing real quick, my man. Frat Hunter, Tommy Batera decapitated the woman, and you you got those calling him a real gangster. Nobody says nothing about him murdering a woman. Hey, Rat Hunter, I haven't gotten to that story yet, so here's what you do, my man. Wait till I get to that story, and if you're not satisfied with my answer on that, then you could write that. Okay, I'm sorry to cut you off, Chicago. And since I'm on the show, I'll speak against it right now. If that's what happened, absolutely, you know, something that I can't stand behind. But it's, I, it's, I, from it's, what it's, I know of Tommy yeah. Karate, that's who we're talking about here, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, he was pretty much uh, a known killer of a lot of people. Yes, and this was one You have to take into consideration the mental mindset of someone who's taken that many lives. You're and, not, and, and, and we could talk about that right now. And what I was going to say, people, Sammy Gravano, Tom, Tommy Patera was offered the same deal as Sammy Gravano to rat on John Gotti. And Tommy Patera had nine murders that he did with his own hands, and he refused it. He went to prison for life, and Sammy Gravano took the deal. That's what I was going to say about that. So, so Tommy Patera could have testified against John Gotti and be out of prison. Yeah, you can't de just debate facts either, that the dude's down, too, you know, and he's he's holding it down. He, he stood for what he believed in. Yep. He you know, not, that's, he that's just like John Gotti. I can't necessarily agree with everything that John did, but John took his time as a man and paid his debt to society with his life for the rest of it in the prison. You know, I mean, what, what can you say? And Tommy Patero was a serial killer. He was nuts. And right, I'm not, right. I'm I mean, you can't. Him, but when the time came, he didn't punk out. Sammy was nuts, too. Sammy's a serial killer. And, right. and, and Sammy, oh, he took the deal. You know, and, and, and when the, they wanted to bring that up in court, uh, John Gotti's lawyer, Krieger, wanted to bring it up in court. They wouldn't let him to judge. They didn't want him to know that Tommy Patera turned that deal down. You have to look at it in an unbiased light to, to kind of get sh shift through all the bullshit, okay? Say Osama bin Laden, the most disgusting terrorist to ever exist. We all hate him. Every he's universally across the world hated in it. Israel or, or, or America or any place that he's ever committed a crime against people in the bombings. But could we not say that he was a hell of a leader and that he put a bunch of people together to you know conduct his evil cause? Yeah, sure I mean we'll you know what I mean? Face. There's there's everybody can be looked at from their leadership skills or what maybe he wasn't the greatest man in the world. You know what I mean? There's things that but, not, many, not many people can pull that attack off that he pulled off. Right. You have to, yeah. you, what you have to do is look at it. I'm sorry. I can't look at it real unbiased, but I can say that, you know, cause I hate that bastard so much, but I can say that he was a strong leader to the people that believed in his cause, you know? So, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, things that you can just look at and, and you got to separate your dislike for someone. You know what I mean? Without a doubt. So. Okay. Well, I meant, okay. So when, when you're seeing this stuff and then you put it up 
And then you see these guys, other guys continuously st still accepting them. I'll give you an example. FBS has no charges of hitting women or nothing like that. Mm -mm. You don't see that anything where on his no, charges. No, he talks no. a lot of he talks a lot of crap on here about hitting women, but you don't see it in his record. Why do you think FBS, who you don't see it in his record, but he'll still accept these guys, and he knows what their charges are? Well, I think that he needs allies on here, and he is willing to accept who they are to win wars against people like me and you. Whereas, you know me, Lee, for a long time, I stood alone. I didn't have as many. Until I started doing lives, I didn't have the backup that I have now. I was alone. And I was standing up for Angel. And I was standing up for people that needed my help because they were being abused. Josie and other people. And I was just, you know, I was just being the guy I am. And that's how this whole thing happened. This was not meant... I'm not looking to make a name for myself, but if somebody needs my help, how can I refuse it? And now that I've been doing this for a while, I've been thrown into the lion's den. There's a lot of abusive assholes. Well, without a doubt. Oh, my. 556 five, Media, $100 from Angel Gotti. Thank you, my man. Damn. I, I, didn't see, I didn't see that coming. You see, people, you don't have to get up here and beg for money. If people want to get, help you out, they will help you out. It's better just to have people want to do it on their own. It feels so much better when you get it. Okay. Okay, so so this whole thing going on right now with Code. Let's get back to that. And then Code goes on to SoFlo's show this morning. And SoFlo has no problem bringing him on. Yeah. And you had a, a string of people over here that have this in their history. And they'll put they'll put pictures up of people, claim stuff that they did stuff. Like their big thing with me is I'm a porno addict. For All some right. reason, that's a big thing right now. Uh, that, that, you, you, that you watch porn? Well, who's yeah, that, that hurting? I watch porn, yeah. Who's yeah. that hurting? Uh, I, have no I, I don't understand. I mean, I'm not I'm not a big pornography guy, but if that's what you do, it's, no. you know. Well, yeah, yeah, you can't. No, I don't download porn on my computer, period. That's how you get. That's how you get viruses. Yeah, but they don't play. They don't. They don't care about telling a lie. It doesn't matter if it's true as long as they can hurt you with it. You know what I mean? And that's just the type of people they are. That's the reason why. I think it's so important when I make a statement against someone that I drop police reports with it because $10. there's really no denying denying that. Lee Pinnell, ten dollars. Thank you very much. I appreciate that from across the pond. Okay. So where are you going to take this, my man? All the way. Now, All the way. Are you, so let me ask you, what happens if, they, if one day you wake up and they got you dead to right? Are you going to, like, will that make you fight harder? What would happen at that point? That activates something that they don't want. That's, that's where, what... Uh, that's all I will say about it. Uh, that will activate protection mode of my family. That's well, when it. Well, that's when it. When they bring it to my front door, that's when I bring it to theirs. And that happened with MRE. When, hey, when, King of Bullshit, is there a moderator in there? Tell him to show his face. I will meet me at the Burger King. I give you the address to, and I'll show you my face. See, that's the deal. I block them. Hey guys, would, these people I, would love to. For me to show my face you know why they were threatening to call the dhs on me because they said i smoke in front of my grandchild i don't smoke at all imagine that they have a camera in your house and they know you smoke have you ever seen have you ever most people haven't seen what i look like okay yep i don't smoke at all i wouldn't have, be 52 years old and have the body i've got if i smoked so, hey guys, from now on, don't let anybody come in here and disrespect our guest. He is our guest, and he's not to be just disrespected. Well, that's okay. I can disrespect him back by answering him. If yeah, but like. I don't want I don't want them to come in here and disrespect you like that when we got moderators. Right. I, I, I just don't because that's one of the things. When, when I go in my your chats, I'm sure that you know I get hit sometimes, but you defend me, and uh, it shouldn't be happening. Jeff Tilly, why don't you let read his question, Lee? That's a good one. And I believe it is a good one. Just curious about the false lies that 
you are claiming about how to fake sex tape and hurting women's reputation you guys are okay with that hypocrisy at its best hey jeff tilly let me ask answer that one brother hey jeff how do you know fake? did you see it what I'd like to know, Jeff, is uh, how you know it's fake. You do realize it's just like the penis pictures that are floating around about code of the streets right now. If someone was to repost that, it's revenge porn, and it's actually a crime in some states. So is it fake or is it real? I'd like you to know to give us the uh, evidence that it's fake before you accuse us of supporting something that's fake. It isn't real. Or it could be worse. You can have a crooked penis with a mushroom head with a. Uh... Yeah. Or, or you, yeah. Or, or, and I've, I've absolutely seen that. And you know what? I don't want to see it. Don't ever no, say that to me. No, no, no. Hell no. Somebody <laughs> sent it to me and I'm like, what the F are you doing? I don't want that. Eh. It scared the hell out of me. I'll never be the same. <laughs> I'll never be the same. It wasn't me, sir. <laughs> So we know it's crooked, small, and has a mushroom head. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> it, it is. It is. It, no, no, no. It actually has a uh, a Prince Albert. <laughs> so he's blessed by the saints, Prince Albert. You cannot make this stuff up, man. I'll tell no. you what. You two, no. this war zone, this is a war zone, man. This is like, you know, you step, it, it is brutal in here at times. And I'm Chicago sure you, muscle, how much can you bench press? At one time, 475, almost 500. Not anymore. I'm not going to lie. Not anymore. Too fucking old. Sorry. Well, I, I, used that. Be, I used to be a very good arm wrestler. And about four or five years ago, I went to arm wrestle this guy. And when the match got over, all I remember is my whole body felt like it wanted to die. That's the last time I had an arm wrestling match. That's how bad it just, you get to a certain point in life, you just can't do it no more. No, no. You get, when you start getting old, the body tells you, don't be getting underneath, you know, that bench press without a, uh, without a good spotter. You know what I mean? Yeah. And definitely I've, I've lost, you know, bulk and everything else once I hit like 45. So, and I never took steroids or anything like that. I just, ever since I was in the military, and even before that, during high school and everything else, if you know anything about the biker culture, lifting weights, pumping iron, and getting huge is a big deal. Ginny, first time I've ever made a donation on YouTube. Hope I did it right. Ginny, you did it right. And thank you from across the pond once again. So you got uh, Rolex and race cars back in there. Why would anybody believe a faceless troll? You don't have to. Okay. I'm sorry that you feel irrelevant. And they, I pissed you off. <laughs> Why don't you get up here and run your mouth? Drop the yeah, link James, for him. James took care of I'll it. put this guy in a hole in about two seconds. Why would anybody support a sex offender, sicko? That's a good question, my man. Why That's would you do that? That's I dropped all those charges, and you're still supporting him and over here running your mouth about it. And I've got the charges. You don't even know who I am, but you support a sex offender, scumbag. And Pull you know, up. Uh, Rolex, that's a very good question. Send me the answer to that, and I will, I'll send. Hell, it to put you. his ass up here. I'll, I'll light him up right now. Yeah, I, I don't want to go that that get, get that crazy and on here right at this point <laughs> because I know where that would go. Uh, yeah, he he would scream, and I would make an ass out of him. That's where that would go. Uh, Mr. Fugazi, yeah, you know it, it's it's dude three forty. It's comical to think that these rats think that the police are their friends. Are they fuck mate? They are. They have more respect for a guy who keeps his mouth shut, buddy. Without a doubt, they do. And uh, uh, Razorhead says it's all propaganda. I've been a biker my whole life, and believe me, Chicago is what he says he is. And that's from Razorhead. And you know, see. those who know know. You know what I mean? If you, if you any real legit patch knows when they have a conversation with me. You just don't have that kind of information. You don't have that kind of knowledge. You don't have that street wisdom. And we know how each other talk. You know what I mean? And like, look at Real Deal, who moderates for Angel and comes and moderates for me. 
He's a nineteen. He's a he's a seventy five year old outlaw. And you know, I'm glad yeah. I have you. I, I'm glad I have you here too because I'm going to play something for you that Sammy the Bull Gravano said, and I'm going to tell you something, give you some facts on it, and you can tell me what you think. How about that, Chicago? Sure, no problem. Okay, I'm going to play this right now, people. It's very short, but I want you to listen closely to what he says. Who wants to go free? So when people understand those stories, and that's what I went through. That's what happened with so, John Gotti, right? That's exactly yes. what happened. Right. It's exactly what happened. So when I got to that point, and he had told me right to my face, I was with him 11 months in prison before I flipped, and he said, Sammy, I'm going to make the lawyers make you look like a monster. My tapes where I'm talking behind your back, uh, you're going to hear I'm talking negative. So they're going to tell the jurors, you hear John Gotti complaining about Sammy. You're mute, Lee. I'm sorry. Siri Gravano has said something that he's never said to John Gotti said before, and he needs to be called on it. He said that John Gotti said, I'm going to make you into a monster, Sammy. Why the hell would John Gotti say to that to, to Sammy Gravano? And why the hell would Sammy Gravano wait this long to say what he said? Well, I, you know, the thing about it is the relationship went really sour. And Sammy's still alive, and John's not. John's not here to defend his side of it. So, to me, Sammy can say anything he wants and, you know, and get, a, and and people, get away with it. And the only people that are here to defend it are John's family, you know. And I guess, you know, that's why Angel does what she does. And, you know, I see her in the chat now. He's a liar. Well, you know, think about it. If you had to look in the mirror every day, because you turned on your whole belief system uh, and you were scorned because of whatever those tapes said. I, you know, I, I, it doesn't matter what the tape said. He should have went to John and worked it out. He should have went to John and said, hey, bro, you know, I don't like what you said on these tapes, you know. But there was a lot, you know, Sammy was going to do you know, a million years if he didn't do what he did. So, it, you know, it was a tough situation. And Sammy, in my opinion, took the wrong road. And, and, and here's one thing we have to remember, Chicago. John Gotti knew he was screwed with or without Sammy. They got him on, on, on tape admitting murders. Right. And, right. and Tommy Karate was offered the same deal as Sammy. They didn't, Sammy was like a last alternative to them. They felt dirty dealing with Sammy, but they had no choice because the other people that he went to before Sammy all said, no, they wouldn't testify against Gotti. But right. Sammy, Sammy said, I'll do it. I'll do it. You have to think that those agents probably went every avenue that they possibly could before they went to Sammy because they knew how much shit that Sammy pulled 19 murders. That's no joke, you know, and he would have been the last, he'd have been one of the main targets, but here's the thing. John threw up the middle bird to him and he pissed him off and he beat so many trials. And there, there was an, it, it wasn't so much that John was worse than Sammy or any of that. It was that he, he was like me. Okay, in a way, he threw up the bird to all these assholes and he became the number one target of the government. Yeah. And Think I about it. it. Now I am the number one target of everybody over there. But that's okay. I love wearing a bullseye. Come well, get I, it. I, well, listen, dude, Chicago, I love when you stand in front of me. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm, I'm going to get on to something else about Sammy while I have you here, too. So, okay. Sammy, uh, there's... On, on, on his 302s, um, Alan Kaiser is known in the 302s as a John Doe. They don't mention his name on purpose. Rest he in peace, it. Alan Kaiser. Love you, Joy. And he, they did that because they didn't want, they thought it would be bad publicity if people knew that Sammy killed a kid. And then Sammy also had killed his brother in law, Nicholas Scabetta. And I'm going to tell you this, and I believe this is his 
uh, pitcher. It may not be. And if it's not, I apologize. Um, I, it's hard to find pictures on him. And so they, uh, the only thing they found of him was his arm, a part of his arm. And they buried him in a casket, just his hand and arm. His body was cut up. And Sammy said that he knew nothing about it. But here's the deal about Sammy. Here's what we got to remember. I want you to, I'm going to read something to you guys. And you could think, you could take it whatever way you want. But let's see. Okay. Give me one second. This is called Calling Him Sammy the Gay Bull. That's the name of this article. So, okay, this is notorious gangster Salvatore Sammy Gravano had homosexual relationships with a young man be, making his way up the ranks of the Gambino crime family, according to a new book proposal. Authors Laura and Karen Garofalo, Sammy murdered their brother too. Uh, when their father, Eddie Garofalo, was murdered by Gravano's henchmen in 1990, our father's blood sister revealed that Gravano's bisexuality was common knowledge on the streets of Brooklyn. People in Bensonhurst knew, but no one really talked about it. According to the proposal now being offered to the public, Gravano once carried on a secret relationship. Uh, the Garofalo's called the man Jack Rosso. Okay, and after Gravano wed Deborah Scabetta, he supposedly learned that Scabetta's brother-in-law, Nick, who Sammy killed, was having an affair with the same man as Sammy. Hmm. Uh, a lot of people say Sammy killed him because he knew Sammy was gay. And uh, Sammy knew but back then in the mob, you don't get made if you're known as a gay man. Right, right. And there's a lot of information. But see, the feds bury that stuff, people. They bury it. And I had heard those rumors before, too, that, you know, with Sammy and that. I, I, can I speak to that? No, I don't know anything about Sammy's sexual preference and, you know, whatever he was doing. But I I can say this, that, yeah, in, in any type of organized situation like that, you know, that type of thing. It's funny because uh, everybody always asks me how accurate Sons of Anarchy is. And I can just say that the transsexual stuff that was in there would never be allowed in a club. That yeah. would, you know exactly. what I mean? So, hey, yeah, it's, it, it just, it is what it is. You know, so again, if, if Sammy was doing that and, you know, he ended up having to cover his tracks because, his, you know, the guys in, in, in the organization would find out, it, you know, it probably was a smart move on his part if he was involved in something like that to try and cover it up. Because they would have probably covered him up, <laughs> you know, had they had found out. So, again, I don't know if it's true, but I can lead to the fact. I can tell you what would more than likely happen. Now, and just so you know, Nicholas Scabetta, who was his brother-in-law that got uh -huh. killed and cut up into pieces, never uh, the, uh, his wife never knew about it until it came out in the 3 -0. You know, actually, they found the part of the body, but they never knew that Sammy was involved in it. Sammy went to the funeral and uh, they had no idea that Sammy was his own wife, his own family. And the same thing happened with Alan Kaiser. They had no idea Sammy was involved with it. And what the government did to cover this stuff up is they called Nicholas Scabetta. Uh, that is sealed. Uh, that part of the 302s are sealed. You cannot find anything on Nicholas Scabetta, even though they, they didn't want that publicity. And then with Alan Kaiser, as you know, he's called John Doe. So if you guys went over and looked look at his 302s, you'd have to look for John Doe in order to know that was Alan Kaiser. You know, and it's, you know, it, it, just think about that. When you kill, you kill your wife's brother. Yeah, there had to be something very serious there yes. for him to kill his own brother-in-law. I will, you know, so I he, will say that that's a, you know, you, you had to know that if it was found out, the relationship between you and your wife would never be the same. So. And, you know and, 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 you know, when you think about it too, he also, uh, anytime Sammy blames a murder on somebody, it's Louis Molito who's dead, Paul Castellano who's dead. He blamed the murders on people that could not say yes or no, whether they ordered it or whether it was true. When he, Alan Kaiser, he, he knew Louis Molito was dead. So he came out and said, Louis did it. And, uh, 
and even though his 302, when they when you read the 302 about the uh, uh, the John Doe, he says he did it. He never mentioned Louis, and say so, right. you know so over which which Sammy's done very successfully. He's literally changed his history and his personal life to make himself look like a Superman. That's what he's well, doing. Well, that, that's what anybody's going to do, right? I mean, I can even give Rolex and race cars that, that you know, if, if you're going to, you know, come on the internet baseless, you can be anybody you want to be. And if the people aren't there to, uh, you know, back up your stories or whatever, you know, and they're dead, then Sammy can get on his show and, and, and tell his version. You know what I mean? And his version, if I, hey, if Lee, if I tell you my version, it's always going to make me look good. Same as, you know what I mean? So, you know, I, do I doubt that that's what's happening? Not at all. You know, there's so many things that he probably is is ashamed of, you know, that he probably doesn't want to admit to and things. You know, I mean, you can't tell me that Sammy is proud of the way this thing turned out. You know, I, I just, I can't believe that. I know better as a man. I know how I would feel about it. So, from Somebody, a totally outside look, you know what I mean? I don't, you know, I'm not even a mob historian like most of the guys around here. I, I learn a lot from other people, but I do know the case. I listened to as much as I could. I've listened to the tapes. I've listened to, you know, what I could find in bits and pieces on the internet. And from what I see, the play, you know, I think that the story that's out there before Sammy got out and started doing his thing was pretty accurate. You know what I mean? I'm going to drop the link. If anybody wants to jump up here and talk to Chicago, I don't want no bullshit when you come up, but you're more than welcome to come up. People can talk in civilized manner. And I know Chicago is not afraid to face anybody. He's already proved that. Uh, not at all. And explain to people why you will not go on because I, you, we, me, and you talked about this. OPS drops the and, and and he's famous for doing this, dropping the link and telling people to come up. Explain to people why you won't do it. Well, you can fish somebody's IP from the streamyard. Yes, you definitely can. Plain and simple. And is your show open for FBS to come up on any time? Sure, I'm not going to fish his IP. I know exactly where he lives. Yeah, exactly. Who, who, I'm not. Who, I'm not making threats of calling the DHS on people because I don't like them. And that's the thing, you know. When I uh, when I went on his show the other day, I don't, I can't stand a bastard. I don't want to go on his show, but he was there just like. Uh, but I'm in a position where everybody knows my address already. Right. You know, I'm not. You know. Th that's it. They they know my address. Um, uh, people always want to know why, why, why don't I just come out? Well, maybe because I'm most effective like this. Maybe they want to call the police on me and try and file false charges. Maybe they want to call the DHS and tell them that I'm abusing a child here. Maybe they'd like to call the FBI and tell them that I'm in here murdering my wife and they yeah. send a SWAT team. Okay. And they can do it very easily. It happens yeah, all the time. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. People that have a lick of intelligence know that someone as hated as me for exposing scum is better off left to be. Let them find me if they want to find me. And I, I just got it. Angel Gotti and Angela the Right Winger have made two. They both said something that people must remember. Those tapes that John Gotti did are not the only tapes. There were tapes done with Sammy Gravano on them, too. Where, Has anybody got those tapes? Because I No, would love the FBI won't give them out. Oh. Yeah, no, they're they're they're, they're just like uh, his brother-in-law's, uh, his brother-in-law, it's sealed. It's part of, you know, I'm guessing that's what it is. Tell me if I'm wrong, Angel, but I believe that the, they can't get those tapes because uh, FBI won't release them. They don't yeah, want to see, I think that the FBI should have to give full disclosure on a case like that. If they listen, if they are going to give uh, immunity to a man who killed 19 people, the public has the right to those tapes. Yes, 
Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and Sean says Sammy flipped on many others. Yes, Sammy flipped on many, many other people, not just John Gotti. Some of them were his good friends. Let's also remember, not only did Sammy uh, flip on his good friends, he also killed a lot of his good friends. Right. You know, so, I mean, I, I do definitely believe that when a, when the government has a case that they're working like that, that they do, that they owe the public full disclosure on that case. All the paperwork, all the tapes, all the interviews, the filmed interviews, you know, sitting in the back room with three or four FBI agents writing all this down on paper. Every bit of that should be public access. Same with if they're trying to. You know, say like someone from ISIS and they've got him in Guantanamo or whatever the case may be. The public has the right to know and it should be part of the Freedom of Information Act. Yes. And, you know, I'm a strong constitutionalist. And a lot people, of you still got people in Guantanamo and we have no idea why they're there. Right. I mean, we we as as people who have served take a oath to uphold the Constitution. And again, I believe it is a, is a constitutional right for the public to know what our government is doing unless it's a matter of national security. Now, with that said, the, 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 the Gotti case and Gravano, that's not a matter of national security. And if so, edit out the part about national security. Like, yeah. I remember back in the day I seen this story. And it was so interesting to me about how the mafia was working with the government during World War II and helping with the docks guard. Yeah, and, and, yeah. You know what I mean? Those type of things to keep their people that are undercover or whatever, or say a mob guy that doesn't want to be seen cooperating. I under, I can understand that but get, because, again, we're talking about a matter of national security. But if it's one mob guy testifying against another mob guy, I feel that full disclosures, just like I do when I accuse somebody of something, I I have to be, that's why I won't do it without backup or proof, because I believe full disclosure is the only way, you know. Once again, people, I dropped the link. Uh, let's read what Mr. Vergez said. These rats have always have an effing excuse why they flip. The truth is they flip because he was looking at a long sentence. It's not that it's that fucking simple. Yeah, guys, the tapes are irrelevant. Uh, and Dagno, uh, Dag uh, Dagosta, imagine if Caso, if uh, Caso was the guy on the couch who was got off and was on the couch telling his story. Oh, my God. If, out of everybody that went to prison, that'd be the last guy that the government should have ever let out. Yeah, I don't guess I know who that is even. Anthony Caso, he was a, uh, they tried to assassinate him. They shot him five times and he lived. Oh, wow. Okay. And then he, went and, he went, went and hunted everybody down to try to kill him. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. and I, you know, he was he was just an insane man. Uh, I dropped the link, Major. Anybody can come on the show. I dropped the link. If you come on respectfully, you're more than welcome. Yes, rest in peace, Alan Kaiser, 100%. Major Lee, how you doing? What's going on? So what, br what brings you to our show today? Oh, man, there's all kind of lures out there just trying to entice people in. That's all. So what do you what, so what, what you got to say, my man? Well, I, you know, there's a whole lot to say, Lee. Okay. Um, first of all, I don't got nothing against Chicago muscle, you know, right. other than he talks all this shit. And he don't show his face, but he wants other people to show their face. All I want is for Chicago Muscle to show his DD-214 and prove that he's a Purple Heart recipient. That's and it. Who, and who are you that I have to do that? I'm nobody, so forget about there it. There you go. There you go. Yeah, so there you go. Be, you I, can sit I, there and shut the it, fuck up. Until you know, you can sit there and shut the fuck up, bitch, hold motherfucker. On, hold on. Oh, hold on. Yeah, hold on. You got fucking disrespectful right away, Jagoff. Yeah, right. Dude. I See, this you. is why, Lee. Yeah, you know, yeah. who the fuck is this motherfucker to question me? What bullet did you take for the country, Lips? And, and my man, that's why I, I booted you, because I asked you to come on respectful. He would have had a respectful conversation. Well, usually a Jagoff can't be respectful, Lee. And there's yeah. a and mob tube is full of them. A lot of them. He could have just came up here and asked me to drop I'm it. I, I, 
Yeah, and, exactly. yeah, and I said, and who are you that I should? He could have answered, I'm your brother from the Marine Corps that's asking you where you served her. And, and I would have said, I'll tell you what, let's have a private conversation so that people don't get my documents from my story. 100%, my man. But no, you got to get up here and act like a prick. You know why? Because you're not interested in what I am or me showing my face. You're more interested in protecting one of your prick sexual predator buddies and see that's what the problem is and you know what the best part is i I don't even know i've never seen this guy before i didn't either and uh, you know i when he came on uh i was under the assumption that it was under friendly terms because he showed his face uh major lee i'm not here to talk to you i'm here i want to talk to lee we do it on your own time jag off because i'm here right now eat a dick well, look at this Punk. one, right? And this if one. you want to know who I am, I give the same address to everybody. And look at this one right here. And you don't, hey, I'm going to tell you right now, after looking at you over there, shooting your big mouth off, skinny, you don't want to meet me. You don't want to know who I am. Believe me. I'll fucking eat you, punk. And look, this is what they like to do, Chicago. Check this one out. It's Lee, Section 8 apartment. Rent is due soon, dude. Yeah, okay, let me ask you something. There, there's no way that Lee Cole can be collecting Social Security. No, no. Can I say something, you fucking unintelligent, dumb motherfuckers out there? My sister had to collect her Social Security at 62 early because she got detached retinas. And she couldn't work any longer. So instead of gathering a government check, she actually collects her pension that she paid into her whole life like Lee. Yeah, that's what they don't realize. Like like uh, Dumbass said the other day during our debate that it was welfare, Social Security. Major Lee Awesome, wait until Lee gets off with me because I don't want to smell your dick breath from SoFlo's cock anymore, (laughs) motherfucker. You bitch. Okay. okay. Uh, do, do you look stupid enough, motherfucker? Idiot. Anyway, Lee, go ahead. I see you're having a good time over here. No, 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 no. It's, uh, no, it's no go ahead. I'm saying go ahead with the show and what you're talking no, about. Well, you, know what the, you know what the unfortunate part? People can come on and talk nicely. They don't have to be assholes. You know, just start a conversation. Hey, he could have started a conversation and said, hey, brother, you know, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And I'd have gave him the answer and said, why don't you contact me privately where a bunch of my enemies aren't sitting around watching, trying to gather intel on me, which I suspect you were sent in to do. Because no, most men that I've met, give me a one in Lee's chat if you give a shit about my DD-214. Give me a two if you don't. I ain't taking over your show, Lee. I'm just showing. No, that's okay. Uh, Mr. Fugazi, Paul Castellano put a contract out of Nick, Nick Shabetta's life, talking to, uh, too much, plus he was using drugs, and Big Paul, he didn't like it. And he told Gravano that he had to. No, that's Gravano's story, Mr. Fugazi. Gravano said that story. Not Gravano said that story. What makes it true? Because he said that story, Mr. Fugazi? Sammy has put a lot of stories out there with the government that aren't true. Okay, Sons of Italy. Men who disrespect women disrespect their own mother. Men who disrespect women mostly don't have fathers at home. That's true. Because mine would have slapped the taste out of my mouth for doing it. Oh, that's a, the worst thing Jimmy Calandra ever did on his show is when he put up that fake picture of him in prison visiting Jimmy uh, Tommy Karate. You heard about that, right, uh, Chicago? I actually think the uh, worst thing that he ever done was talking about slapping Angel. That's the only thing I've ever. He said heard. that. I don't. Oh yeah. yeah. If your fa- if your father was still alive, he'd slap the taste out of oh. your mouth or something like that. You know. 
realistically, who is he to speak on another man's daughter about slapping her in the face? And, and I don't think is, I don't think John Gotti would have hit one of his daughters like that and slapped her in the face for all the tea in China. Men of honor don't beat women. And that's the mistake Calamandria made talking about. And also, and Tommy Crotty was so pissed that Jimmy said that he knew him that he sent out a letter to somebody saying, no, he does not know me. I never met Jimmy Calandra. So, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's these guys, you know, that sit around these chat rooms running their big mouths that ain't got the nut to do anything but sit on a keyboard and talk a big game. Did you see that guy you just had on? Yes. Lee, you know what I look like. Yes. I would snatch that prick up by his neck and ask him the fucking questions that he asked me. And he would shit in his fucking pants. We both know that. Yes. But this is what these little weasels do. They never got over in school. They never were the popular kid. They never were the guy that could just walk up to somebody like me and say anything they wanted to. So now they get on the internet and do it. And you know what makes me laugh, Chicago? The fact yeah. that the fact that they put keep putting up this poor guy from, from Maine and saying it's you. Yeah. That's what really, it doesn't even make me laugh. It's very sad. Yeah, it is they, really. They keep putting up somebody that it isn't you. Well, it's just an excuse like every other excuse, Lee. If they, if, if they really wanted to know who I was, I've offered multiple times and nobody shows up. Okay, let's see what else here. Okay. Nobody knows it's true because you're faceless. Actually, I'm not faceless. How are you seeing these things so quick? I'm way behind. <laughs> I'm, I, I watch the chat as we... Uh, I, oh, you're, you're up to date on it? Yeah. Well, okay. I watch the chat. You know, because if people have questions or they run their mouth, I don't let them get away with it. Well, you know I, am, I, I am a, an ass whooper on the fly. Yeah, that's right. You can come on up here and run your mouth. Cletus, you didn't even have to. You didn't even have to kick that guy off. Really, he was about to get a real beat. No, he lied to no, no, no. He lied to me, and I don't want this to turn into that type of show. I asked him nicely to talk to you nicely. The minute he said he said that, he had to go. It doesn't matter, you know. He, you know, if you come on, make it. Make... Well, all he had to do was answer the question. He said, "Who am I?" I said, "Who are you to ask?" You know, if you outrank me and ask for my papers, I might give them to you. And if he wants to get a hold of you, he can find you on Twitter, right? Um, I guess. Or you can find, <laughs> yeah. Or you can find me, and I can send it to him. And he can decide. What I, I one look at the guy, and I'm really not interested in having a conversation with him because here's the facts: you're beneath me, punk. Sit your skin, sit your skinny ass down before you get hurt. Yes, Casso and Sammy sold drugs together, and that's another thing, people. You got Sammy Gravano out there with John A. Leitner talking about all these drugs on the street that are killing people. But yet these guys were huge drug dealers. You know, they've killed people with drugs. He did well, you know, the thing about it is, too, Lee, is you got these guys that come over here and they're all worried about me and my DD-214 or my Purple Heart or where I served or all that bullshit. Why don't you show the same concern for the women who are being hurt in this community? You have any idea how bad that makes you look to attack the guy who's defending women? It doesn't matter if I'm a liar, if I'm this, if I'm that. It, my deeds are what you should be looking at. And what you're looking at is your personal beef because you're buddies with these other scumbags. You, what's the matter? Do I hurt your feelings because I support women who've been beat? Why? Have you beat a woman before? And you're ashamed of yourself? And this is your way of acting out? Hey, Finn Freak, you sit over there and support Tony Pizza. W what matters about my military record when you sit over there and support a bum who talks horrible stuff about women and black people and everything else? Let's get it all out there, guys. I got no problem. And I respect the fact you're doing that. Woman beating what? punk pussies. You support that. And we're not talking, we're talking about horrible women beating stuff. Yeah, you don't have to support me, Finn Freak. I don't know. I know. I told you to go fuck yourself and took your wrench because I seen you over there propping up pizza. 
beating up on one of my black female friends. Several of them, Marla, Josie, but that's what you support. See, we got Arthur Stuwell, the sex supporter. <laughs> oh, Arthur Stuwell is a low life. Uh, Why he, is he here then? He's here right now? Yeah, he's in the chat. You got a moderator in there? No, he's not. Uh, moderate, moderator, get rid of Arthur Stu. I don't want that piece hey, of shit in my I've got team muscle moderators in here. Engage. Lee can clean the mess up later. Yeah, just get, just get rid of him, please. Engage. Shit talkers will be executed. <laughs> well, I'd rather have them put on timeout. It depends wow. how bad they get. Arthur Stuwell, uh Oh, I see you right here, Arthur. Yeah, Arthur, why do you support a man who's got charges like Tony Soflo? Answer that. Arthur Stuwell loved me when I was friends with FBS. But the following day, he was talking horrible shit about me. You know, yeah. you, you know, it's amazing how you can stop being a friend. With, the chat can just turn on people because they're told to do so by the people they follow. I wouldn't expect that from any of you guys here. Whoever you want to follow. Well, the, the, truth, the truth of it is, Lee, I'm willing to stand and dance with any of these punks. Why? Because the truth is on my side. I know who I am, and I know if I have to prove it one day, I can do so. I can also prove who you are and who you stand behind. And I know that upsets you, and it hurts your feelings. Because you don't like to be exposed as a lowlife and given money and support of a lowlife. And I think Angel, Angela says it best. With all these jerk stocks and people, all you have to you have to be a fool to tell anybody or show anybody who you are. Just think of the hell they put people through that have showed who they are. Well, yeah. I mean, look at the people in even, say, FBS. He's had the DHS called on him by somebody and all that crap. It ain't just this side. You know, it's not just this side. The people on that side have, have had issue. So you're going to sit and tell me that I'm stupid for protecting my family, for protecting my personal life. No, I think it's stupid to get out on the internet and run your mouth like a fool and put your ass on the line for a bunch of losers and make yourself look like you support a rapist because you want to be a part of a cool club called mob tube. You know what you're all to me? Jerk offs. You're not men. You're punks. Okay. Right here. Danny Smith was exposed. I don't know Danny Smith. Who's Danny Smith. I know Danny trio. Uh, I know that you guys said he spent nine years in prison. You guys exposing him. I, have you spent nine years in prison? Could you spend nine years in prison? Yeah, if you're asking me. <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's like, you know what I mean, though. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit longer than that, even. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I don't know the thing with Danny. I don't, I, you know what? Here's the thing with Danny. I have heard the shit, okay? But where the proof came from were the lips of liars. So and here's the problem. Here, not one mugshot. Not one mugshot, my man. Here's the problem. When you lie your ass off, you lose credibility. And I stop listening to you entirely. That's just what it is. When you catch me in a lie, you can prove, please expose me to the world. I like what Dade says here. This is a circus. You just can't look away. <laughs> yeah, and we, we, we got a couple of bozos, but that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, but he's right though. With the crazy shit that goes on in here, man, sometimes it's just—it's hard to listen. We had three hundred, and we've had over three hundred people in here for forty-five minutes now, longer than that. It's obvious that people are listening. Uh, you, I'm going to get people in here that don't like me. I'm going to get a lot of people that do like me. I'm just glad you guys are here. Yeah, it's just and and you ninety percent of the people that want to get live with me are from that other side. And to sit here and blow my voice out arguing with a bunch of dick smokers is not my intent. You want to come argue with me, come do it on my show. I might drop the link for you. I might not. Well, the Westie says, $10, great show, Lee. I'm working on listening. And Chicago Muscle always keeps it 100%. And the women need to be told about these women beaters. 
they are following on YouTube. Absolutely, yeah. Rusty's one hundred. Lee, maybe, what, Lee yeah? maybe you can answer me a question. Yes. Why do these people care who I am if I'm doing God's work? That's how they are. They're, they're that way with they were that way with MRE. They were that way with MB. Uh, they just that's just the way they are, dude. It, it, but you know what's funny though? They have common sense on their side. Common simp or punk. We know who he is. He they still won't admit who he is. And he and this guy attacked a seventy two year old uh, man, and they won't admit right. who common sense is. And common sense still won't show his face even though we know his name is Brandon Bell. Well, I, I, to be honest with you, I have not got conclusive proof of that. To be, And that's me. I don't know what everybody else has, but have you ever noticed? A lot of people have asked me, why don't you bring it up? Why don't you bring it up? Well, because I don't know who he is. Yeah. Well, here's how I found out it was him. Uh, when I first started my show. Hold on a second. Look, read Finn Freak's comment. It's awesome. Finn Creek's put, put Finn Freak, because the devil can claim he's doing God's work. <laughs> okay. How can I claim to be helping women and ex by exposing scumbags and that be the devil doing that? Am I not telling the truth that I not bring police reports? Finn Freak, your intelligence is that of a pubic hair. You should just hang there and shut the fuck up. Gianni, no, uh, Stu Wells not welcome in this show for the simple fact that all the horrible things he said in these chats about people from this side, whether it's Angel Gotti, myself, Chicago, he talks horrible stuff. He's really not welcome in here. I don't even mind if people talk bad stuff, but some of the stuff that he says on those shows are horrible people. So now he has. Now he can go to SoFlo Show tomorrow and talk a lot. Detroit of Ziggy, I think he's read. Drop the link three hundred times. I'm not interested in having a conversation with you. Your breath smells like SoFlo and FBS dick. I don't want to <laughs> sit here and smell it. You think you want up here to get verbally abused? Stupid. Trust me, you don't. Bobby Baca uh, Bacala, aka Pep, three dollars super sticker. And uh, one dollar from uh, Cletus. Thank you, Cletus. Nine ninety nine from Angela, the right winger. Chicago offends them, but women users users don't. Enough said. And that's the truth. I mean, yeah, what, what what exactly am I doing that offends you? <laughs> that's what I want to know. Oh, Arthur Stewell has a new name. That ought to tell you a lot about Arthur Stewell. Why do you have to have 300 names? Well, I'm not sure who Arthur Stewell is. He might even be John John Wolf. I'd rather have John Wolf just come in here as John Wolf. And then I'll kick him out sooner or later because he always does something. John Wolf is a living douche. <laughs> yeah, he could be a prick, boy. He's a fucking Massengill douche. No, he can be a he can be a dumbass. I just find him annoying. I give that kid a hair lip every time I feel like it. <laughs> I mean, I that's, that's another that's another reason why they hate me so much. They don't care about what I am or who I am. I've just offended them by giving them a a good hair lip someplace or another, and now they want to get up here and hold me back. I'm on the internet with a big keyboard running my mouth. It's a joke, bro. They're hey, all thank you, books. thank you, James. You didn't have to do that, but thank you. I appreciate it. You do a lot to help me, James. Okay. Every I think time we should get back to the subject, man. These guys are a bunch of freaking annoying. So, did are you done with the uh, the? Uh, no, stuff you know or? you can talk about what you want, my man. It's whatever you want to talk about. Go for it and go in that direction, and I'll start asking you questions. Angela, I'll admit that I have you. He, she says the fact that grown ass men have multiple accounts amazes me. Well, I will admit that I've had two or three different accounts because you get banned so fast if you're trying to leave a message. But, you know, I don't do it consistently all the time, every day with, you know what it's called? Sick and warped obsession. Weird people with mental disorders. They're not all right in the head. 
And if you can't tell that by watching one John Wolf video, I don't know what to tell you. You know what he did last year? He showed up on my show in a bunny suit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I seen a clip of that. Yeah. That's the <laughs> I first know, time. Angela. That's the first <laughs> time I ever met him. Well, you know, I know some stuff about John Wolf he doesn't like to talk about. I'm probably weird to you, too, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> so let me oh, ask yeah. you I mean, let's get to johnny mac now listen johnny mac he's a scumbag he's fucked me over so many times uh but the fact of the matter is he really stuck it i'll tell you what he stuck it to code and uh what is your opinion on johnny mac i'll save that for the sit down i'm about to have with him okay and uh, do you think that... Um, I think that Johnny Mac has, has got an issue with a friend of mine, a female friend of mine, that's uh, been arguing back and forth, and I'm looking to talk to Johnny to see if we can get that resolved. See, the, the main thing, Lee, isn't to sit on the internet and be a tough guy and be an idiot and, and you know, argue back and forth with these people. Uh, but... My main goal is if a woman is being harassed is to help her so that that stops. You know what I mean? And and if I can help someone by having a sit down with Johnny and and having a conversation and saying, you know, let's 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 come to some type of agreement here. You know, you leave these people alone, maybe I'll leave you alone, that type of thing. You know what I mean? Johnny uh I know his has got the reputation uh of uh, 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 sticking everybody in the back that he's friends with. Right. And, and you know, I, I I will tread lightly with Johnny when we have our talks and our dealings. But at the same time, if you don't try to reach out and n nothing ever gets solved, would I sit down and have a sit down with FBS? I sure would. Absolutely. If it would, was to save a friend from... Uh, abuse or, 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 or more heartache or anything of that nature, I would absolutely do that. You know, I, it's not about who can be the toughest for me or who can talk the most shit or who can get on here and prove I'm a fake or a liar or whatever. The difference between me and these people is I truly just want to help other people, even if it's them. Okay. Now, I, can honestly say this. I can honestly say this about FBS. After dealing with him over a year and a half, there's no way I would ever sit down with him because we tried it. It ain't never going to work out. He is what he is. And uh, he's going too far with the horrible things that he has done, especially with Angel's daughter for me to even. Well, uh, it, yeah, I understand that. But it, at some point, we're going to all have, we can't do this forever. Okay. I look at it this way. It's not good for your health, Lee. You're an older guy. You don't need the stress. Angel, she doesn't need the stress. <laughs> look no, at this, Angel. This <laughs> but my point of it is that instead of all this stress, if everybody could just go to their corners and leave each other alone, wouldn't that be better? I mean, you know, I'm not well, saying we got to be but friends. But here's why it couldn't happen. Because what are they going to do if they – had to go to their corners and just do shows. They what would they do shows on? Well, you, you know. know, when you become an attack channel, uh, that's what you're good at. That's what you do your show on. And FBS has said it many times. He makes plenty of money. Why would he want to do anything else? And uh, so I he, get it. Believe me, I get it. But I always try and look for a solution. You know what I mean to the problem. And if, if they're, if they're, you know, it's kind of like sitting down at the negotiating table with North Korea. Do we really want to fire those nukes? You know what I mean? Do you, do you really think it's a bad idea to sit down with the enemy and say, Hey, look, before a lot of innocent, more, more innocent people get hurt, the thing gets even farther escalated and we annihilate each other. Maybe it's best to, you know. This, I understand this is a different situation than... It's a very touchy situation right. because of all the horrible things that have been said about women. It's, a, it's, it's, it's just a very touchy situation, especially innocent women. Um, 
Well, uh, you know, you know, I, I understand that a lot of people say, you know, that shit don't work, and I understand it. But here's the thing: when you do sit down and have a conversation, and then they go against that, then you do not have to be guilty in front of God for what you do next. I gave yeah. Soflo the opportunity to walk away and leave me alone. Now you know why I do not trust anything he says, and I will not back off. I did the right thing in front of my maker. I gave him the opportunity to drop it. I, I even walked away for a month, and he still wouldn't drop it. So now everything that happens to him, I am completely justified. I, don't, I can look in the mirror as a man and say, what you're doing is what has to be done. Yeah, and, and, and with Slow Flow, uh, he came on here. You got to remember, when he came on here, he came on attacking me and FBS originally. A matter of fact, we had to fight the first week. I called him chicken shit. For three days, he was mad because I called right. him chicken shit. And I'm saying to myself, is this guy's skin this thin because I called him chicken shit? Uh, but he has never stopped attacking from day one. He's been literally an attack channel every day. Nothing else. Uh, so I don't think he's capable of doing anything else besides being an attack channel. Well, it's like I say, I know what some people want. They, the, A lot of people want to see the world burn. And if it gets to that point, I sometimes do too. But I always look at it this way. I have to act in accordance with my beliefs. And my beliefs are to always try and settle things peacefully. And if you cannot settle things peacefully, go out into total all-out fucking war and destroy. Well, I totally understand that. That's my yeah. philosophy. And that's and, and it's obvious that's what you're doing right now. Yes, that's right. See, a lot, I, of people, a lot of people here with the Johnny Mac thing. Johnny Mac actually is worse than FBS in some ways because he flips more than Benedict Arnold. Hey, Benedict Arnold only flipped one time, people, and he actually had a legitimate cause. Reason. <laughs> hey, I completely, I've been sitting back and watching the whole thing. Believe me, people, I'm not naive, okay? When you people think that I am naive, think of how much information I've dropped and all I know. Think of what I've done here and the things that I've exposed, and I continue to do so daily. So never in your lifetime think that somebody's going to okey-doke the old Chicago muscle because it ain't going to happen. Streetwise, long before this internet bullshit, believe it. Uh, Ron Gross, hate, hate is what makes Piggy money, not content. Absolutely. When he's tried content, he didn't make no money. But the hate, you know, the, the, for him to say the horrible things... And now he brings Gene Barillo aboard. Oh, no. It's like, really? That's like a ship without without uh, a boat without a uh, rudder. Well, bottom line, there's a lot of things you could hate in this world. You know what I mean? Why not go after something worthwhile besides a woman? You're right. And, and you know that? You're right. You hit it right on the spot. There's so much stuff to hate on YouTube that doesn't have to be a woman. That's right. Yeah. There's a lot of there, or just even in the world politically, whatever your stance is, it doesn't. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people that would listen to somebody articulate their views without having to go after a woman. You know what I mean, or something like that. If you got problems with, you want to make a show, bash some terrorist piece of shit or some politician that's dirty and you don't like or the bad practices of, of, of you know the government or the fbi or whatever it is whatever the case mob rats look at mre stance he goes after a specific crowd he has one set goal and it's not women in his mind he's doing an honorable thing because you know, of his I remember, background i remember when they exposed mre and i said that the worst thing they ever did expose him is because he got more popular and that's what happened. Uh, it was better that they just left him alone and let him do his thing. 
Uh, Gianni says, and Gianni, I know what kind of guy you are. If the fat, bald Stanad had any common sense, <laughs> he would move to Alaska, change his name, get facial reconstruction surgery, because nobody over here will forget, and someday, someday he'll bump into the wrong <laughs> one. Stanad is one of my favorite words from the Italian language. That is where it's taken from, right? I laugh so hard every time I hear that. And you know what's funny, though? It is going to happen where somebody does bump in, even by accident. Sooner or later, it will happen. Hey, you know, you can only hire so many bodyguards to watch your ass after all the shit you talk. <laughs> you know, bottom line. And if they can hit the president, FBS, I'm not saying anybody's looking to hit you, but God, you piss people off. Yeah, he does. And he doesn't care, though. He, he thinks he, he thinks he's untouchable. And he doesn't realize that no one in, on here. I, I live in Texas. I'm not untouchable. If somebody wants to come get me, there's nothing I can do to stop it. No. It no. could happen tomorrow. I can't stop it. It's just the way life is. And we always hear about bad stuff happening on YouTube, the people that have shows. I mean, if you look, if you put that in and look it up, there are some YouTubers that had some bad endings. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, and I, you know, and I, again, I know there's a lot of hate out there. I personally am not one of those haters. I don't want to see anybody get hurt. Gravesend yeah. said, Lee, Lee, did you get much donations tonight? Or are you going to shut the show down? You know what? If I don't get any more donations, I will shut the show down and I will never come back. Oh, okay. Did you guys hear me? As a matter of fact, I'll start a members only and do everything in members only. <laughs> I don't want any donations. You can give them to Lee. Okay. You know, did you see what happened with me and Angel the other night? People uh, started sending Angel cash apps, and I and I started fighting with them, saying, will you send it to her, not me? The next thing I, I know, I start getting mad cash apps. And it's 1 o'clock in the morning, dude. All right. And well, it was a bunch of cash apps. And I'm like, it, it was just one of those things. It was just a very funny thing that morning. Oh, and and don't that get me wrong. I don't have any problem with people getting paid for their time that they put in here i just feel that mine is more like a donation of my time to do something good with it you know what i mean i, I you know what i mean i don't want paid for doing what i do because then people just eh, money changes things when it when it's oh you it's you putting on a show and delivering content is different then it, then it almost becomes like a charity thing where I'm, you know, and what am I doing with that money? Going out and buying beer? You know, I well, mean, I, you know, well, look what the money has done to FBS. You can literally see what it's done to him. It's, it's, that's all he's about. He doesn't care. He doesn't respect the people that have been loyal to him. He will right. stomp on somebody. Uh, even if the, how many times have we seen him stomp on loyal people who didn't donate to him? Right, and I, you know it's like Pee Wee, and that guy threatened me for FBS. Yes, but I that that night that he flipped Pee Wee, I was like, bro, that's a bad look, man. Pee Wee was loyal to you, I, even though I don't like the guy. Okay, honesty's you know I'm gonna tell you right now, and I wasn't trying to get Pee Wee on my side. I'm I'll after Pee Wee threatened to beat me up, Pee Wee, I'll remove the rest of your teeth. Okay, but here's the deal: I'm not gonna sit like a punk. And a biased ass and a clown, and say that you didn't get done wrong. Because yeah, you did. And, and one thing about I'm going to say I'm going to say one thing about Pee Wee. Pee Wee will show up. Uh, you know he's not. You know he didn't when he threatened me, but I I don't know. Yeah, it, it, well, it depends where you live too. I mean, he's in Philadelphia. Nah, he said he was coming through the Ozarks, and I let him know <laughs> get a hold of me on Twitter, and he hey, never did. One, so. thing I, one thing I learned about the Ozarks: you don't go in the Ozark to mess with anybody that live in the Ozark. The Too many of, sinkholes in the Ozarks. Oh Too many God. places to put your ass. The, the, the odds of coming out of the doing that in the Ozarks and coming out of Ozarks. You uh, know what was you know what was funny, Lee. Uh, Mike Slick. We were on the phone the other night, and he says, "Do me a favor." He says, "Where's that Burger King?" He says, "I want to look it up." And I let Mike know, and he's like, "Oh my God!" He's like, "Look at it." He's like, "Look at the map." I'm like, what about it? He says, there's a gravel road right next to it that goes right up about 10 miles. And I was <laughs> like, exactly. I said, what do you think? I'm bullshitting? What if somebody says, yeah, come on, I'm going to show up. 
Gravesend, I love this. FBS, your your mob, your YouTube content is nothing compared to Lee's. Because he, hey, listen, when he first came in here, he 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 knew this stuff, but he's going down that money road and he's not going he's not getting off of it, people, until the economy crashes and nobody has money. Why is this Chicago muscle guy, dude, hesitant to debate live? I'm not hesitant to debate live, brother. He say, he tells people to come up on the show all the time, my man. He's debate just not what? Gonna... I'm not. You just don't come up and insult me and talk a bunch of shit, and we can have a debate. But when you start, you know, your clownery, that's it. It's kind of like in person. I will talk to you as a man, face-to-face, -face, not a problem. But the minute you call me Stolen Valor, I'm going to drop five under your chin. That's just what it is. And you can't do that on the internet, so Lee removed him. Pretty simple. Yeah, yeah. It's He was disrespectful. What's the first thing I said? If you come up here, please be, please be respectful. I don't know whoever accused me of being a master debater. Because I'm not a master baiter. Okay? But here's the deal. Um, I don't talk. That's not the school I come from. That's selling wolf tickets and whistling through through the wheat field. Running your mouth. That's not who I am. Okay? I'm not a master debater. I'm not going to sit here and... I will sit and spit facts. But I'm not going to sit here and argue with some clown. Like an idiot. For a half hour. That's just, if you want to do that, let's do it heads up. Marky Mark. That, FBI ahead. don't have content. He's got lip service. Basically, he's a hoe. And you know what's funny, Marky Mark? You were, you've been here for a long time. Me and you have our issues at times. Uh, but you're straight up. Always been straight up. Yeah, I'll give you that, Marky. When you got something to say, you say it. Mike Wally and... Uh, well, you live, we're killing it. We have 300. Oh, we've been over 300 for an hour, oh, almost an hour and a half. Uh, you know, we can't ask for better. Why do you all live uh, with their parents at 40, 50? <laughs> Why do they all live with their parents? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Why do people live with their parents at 40, 50, and 60? I have no idea. I haven't lived with my parents since I was, let me see. Whew. Yeah, long and, time, and you know, 40 and I, years. And I can understand that you know people get divorced, they go stay with their parents. But we're talking about people that just don't leave their parents' house. A right. perfect example: Gunsmoke. He's been living with his grandparents. He hasn't worked now in almost a year and a half since he's been on here. He's an able-bodied male. Well, I don't know if he's male, but he's close to being a male. <laughs> and, and he he refuses to work, and. That's it. But he's a perfect example. Uh, and then again, you've got another guy in California that puts up antennas. Uh, and you know that he slide off some icy roofs. You know, JC has definitely. Are you, let's let's break. Eugene. Has, <laughs> Eugene has slid off some uh, roofs in his life. I'll guarantee you he's hit that head a few dozen times. And now, JC, you also said that I better be careful because I keep messing with these. Mop, these rats. Let me. These guys are not mobsters. These rats. They're rats. They they lost their mobster badge. And you know, it's like they can come here anytime. I got cameras in the back of my house, the front of the house. If they get past that, God bless them, because then I got to shut them cameras off so I don't get in trouble for disposing of them. Well, see, JC worships all these guys. Okay, made guy this, made guy that. You know what? We we all fucking bleed. Well, okay. I think I think what JC's problem was is that he hung out with John Gotti in California for a while. And, uh, you know, he's a big wig, you know. He told John, matter of fact, JC is the one that put the plan together on Castellano. Oh, is he? Yeah. He's the one. He was also part of the uh, Mexican mafia, I heard, and a bunch of other shit. Yeah, Why don't like, you guys go make JC prove that? You're so worried about who I am and what I've done. Oh, look at Chicago. You haven't lived with your parents in 40 years. Uh, it was a figure of speech, idiot. I'm 52 years old. Okay, maybe it was 22. Arthur, yeah. do you sit and look at a picture of me and masturbate? Arthur's, back, Arthur's back in here with a fake name. With, Arthur's Arthur. got 250 fake names. You ain't going to get rid of all of them. 
Arthur Stewell is a weirdo. Best friend of Tony Soflo. And Tony Soflo tells everybody what a great life he has, and he's muscular. I think he's gay for for him and, and fronting for him over here. I don't know. I never seen another man go to bat for another man he didn't want to fuck more than Arthur Stewell does for Soflo. What is it, Arthur? You want to put your little pee, -pee in his ass? I'm sure he'll let you. He likes that. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, let's hope a polar bear eats Peggy. That's that'll be an ugly scene, wouldn't it? <laughs> Lee, I sent you a trade offer in fantasy football. Let me know once you check it out. I will do that at Amber Alert. I hope it's uh, a bear offer. <laughs> now, Finn Freak did say something funny right there. <laughs> Arthur is a G.I. Joe general. <laughs> You know what's sad about you know what's sad about Arthur? He has like a hundred different Arthurs. It's like well, I, I'm saying that's Wolf because Wolf really hates me. Ever since I made that video of his teeth looking like chiclets, he's never forgave me. And I just I I'm sorry. I should have never made that video about your chiclet teeth and your hair that you comb with a pork chop. I'm very sorry. It was him, sir. What's up with JC and his, uh, he's been walking around with uh, track suits lately? Does he wear like track suits went out of style like 20 years ago? So JC is wearing track suits. These guns, $20. Will the Giants make, I don't think so. The Giants got a real tough schedule. I don't, they're not as good as they've been playing. They, they had some easy victories. Uh, it's going to be depend. This week's a big game for them. We talking about them knee-taking motherfuckers over there? I don't watch football. I quit. Having a conversation with JC. <laughs> Lee's the like, I'm changing the subject on that immediately. Yeah. I like football. Yeah, I do. <laughs> no. I do. Oh, yeah. I know. You love sports. It's, I just it's, it's The only thing I watch anymore is UFC. I love UFC, too. I watch oh, I know you do. I know you will have a – we should have a conversation about that someday. Agreed, Lee, 100% NCM, no doubt about it, fellas. And Lee, this is what men do, brother. You know this. Well, not always, we will not always agree on issues at hand, but I'll never disrespect a man over a computer. Hey, you couldn't say it better, my man. I would like to say I will never disrespect a man over a computer, but they won't come see me, so I left no other choice. All I hear is wolf tickets. Uh, Scott, uh, JC has a point. First of all, once once you start a sentence with JC has a point, your your whole paragraph loses credibility. So you you know this is going to be tough, Scott. I'll try to bring it back. Uh, because if a mother effer is dangerous, he needs to decide the rat sometime in his life. Doesn't change the fact that he. Oh, without a doubt. No, no, no. Actually, if yeah, but you know what. Coming out of JC's mouth, because we know JC's not dangerous, JC is the type of guy that picks up the phone and calls people behind their backs or people in their life. JC's not dangerous. If you met JC, he'd probably run on the other side of the street. I hear that when JC sees squirrels, he runs on the other side of the street. And he if will not. You, all I can say to this whole thing is if you cannot watch one video of JC and see that he's a punk. You ain't never been in the street no, in your life. Yeah. You have no street wisdom, no street knowledge. You are a straight up been in mama's basement watching too many good fellas movies and thinking JC might look like somebody in the movie. I don't know, but I'm going to tell you right now, you ever been around any real dudes, you know, right away. There is Gun no poker, you done. There is no mobster that would look like J.C. There is no mobster that would talk like J.C. He is a complete fucking dweeb. Okay? That dude has never done shit in his life. The only crime he's ever committed is beating his old lady. They can't argue with that. It's and I got, yeah, I know you can. I got paperwork, bro. I, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
But you know when people should have gave up on JC when he said that the, when he retired, the cartel got together and took him out on a cruise. Oh my god! The minute he said that, that was that. That was like bye 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 bye. <laughs> he and actually said that. He said that, dude. They took him out on a cruise. The cartel. See, I never, I never knew much about JC and really never cared. But he basically just jumped in, running his mouth about. But what happened in the beginning, I used to bring him on my show and I used to get a bunch of messages and my, the people would be saying, Lee, please stop bringing him on. He's boring as hell. He <laughs> closed your show down. And you know what I said to them? I said, no, nah, he, he, he's been very friendly. I'm gonna, I'm, I'll am i bring him on every once in a while. And then one day he just got upset because uh, he thought I was ignoring him and not bringing him on. But it's when he used to try to get on to uh, MRE show, MRE would leave him in the back room for an hour and he'd wait. Well, here's, here's the next thing that you have to look at. I think it's proper if someone wants you on their show for them to ask you. I would never come to you, Lee, and say, Lee, would you please have me on? You know what I mean? If yeah. you ask me to come on, I'll come on. If not, I, I think you, you know, you're, you got other guests that you might want or, or, or you know. I don't think that the that's proper to ask someone to come on their show. And and, maybe, and, maybe if there's a subject being discussed yeah. and like so you drop the link and I'll come on and give you a, an opinion or something like that guy that was on earlier. If he would have been respectful, I think there was no I don't even think there was a problem with show me your DD 214. But I think what he should have said was, well, I can pull rank on you. Or well, something you know, of that it, nature. You no, know what I mean? I, if it, that's what, you know what I mean? And, you know, here's where they made a mistake with you, Chicago. They kept taking down your other show. And I think that you're you're more dangerous with a show format you have now. Oh, absolutely. They, they, they should have just left, you know, argue with you a little bit and take it like a man, not strike you. And, but instead what they did is they helped you build a, a, a bigger base. I mean, you're going to have... They, you're going to be at a thousand probably within the next 30 days. Well, so, you know, realistically, the soy boys could not stand being laughed at. Yeah. You know? Jason T says, uh, JC was a cogleg, a, a cogleg, a cockleg of, uh, John Gotti. When JC was just a teenager, he began his journey into wacky tobacco. <laughs> yeah. When you're 50 there and you're sucking up weed like that, it's, Loser, I'm sorry. These guys that like get on here and in the background suck. I smoked a lot of weed in my life. I yeah. smoked. I smoked, I smoked a lot of weed too. And look at his eyes. Yeah. That's not from smoking weed. That's from being a dumb slowped motherfucker. <laughs> that ain't the JC is the, the weed isn't the problem. It's JC was born fucking stupid. Okay, yeah. he's born Eugene Crow. Eugene. Anybody named Eugene. That's instant grounds for fucking, you know, they're a dork. They were born to be a dork with that name. I'm sorry if you're not a dork and there's a Eugene in the audience. No, but actually. Eugene you, and Melvin are two names that if you got the balls to call them, you, you're dooming your child. Well, imagine, <laughs> when, when, imagine when he was born, his parents said, let's give him one of those fucked up names going. How about Eugene? Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the dad said, we can either name him that or Melvin. But then dad didn't have a uh, clue that he was even involved. So Eugene stuck. Well, as you know, uh, we'll talk about this in a second. Let me, these guns, I've been watching since September 21. It's been great seeing Lee Cole continue to grow and grow. Uh, thanks to all the content and pure entertainment in the past year. These guns, thank you. I appreciate that. And these guns, uh, and uh, Cletus, you're busting out the, those 99 cent super stickers. Now. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, transition in JCLGBTQ+. Arthur is going to get a chili dog. <laughs> <laughs> Baby! But I'll tell you what. One thing you got to respect about JC. The way he's been transitioning has been pretty impressive. You know? Well, what, what are you talking about? From dork to super dork? No, he's, he, he, no you didn't hear it? He's trying to become a woman. Oh, I had no idea. Yes. A matter of fact, they just cut his penis off. I absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> and they they used a pair of tweezers and some very very fine. Well, well, when they cut it off, <laughs> when they cut it off, uh, what's his name? Coach says, "Hey, can I use that?" <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, I want a transplant. I need, I need one that's not crooked. <laughs> <laughs> JC, Jesus Lee, yeah, don't get coach transplant. It's broken. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what, dude. I can honestly say this: if somebody found a picture of my crooked penis, oh my and god, and an earring with a mushroom on it, <laughs> I'm leaving YouTube. I'm. Ta- it is over, dude. I'm so gone, and my, I'm at least taking a break. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what is he doing? He's still here. I'm sorry. I mean, dude. Uh, okay. Hey, I got to give code for that, man. He's a uh, fucking thick skinned fucker because yeah. we have definitely been giving it to him. <laughs> it's like, okay, he has a crooked four inch penis, has an earring in it, and uh, uh, and a mushroom head. Hey, credit where credit's due. You can even you can even compliment your enemies. Yeah. <laughs> Now, every any woman on here, if they ever meet Code, if anybody meets Code, say you meet him, the first thing you're going to think about, dude, this dude got a crooked dick. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he don't poke me in the ear. <laughs> I hope he doesn't have to use it as a, a, if he gets lost, like whether he goes north, west, to east, he's only going to go in one direction. <laughs> Well, I'm going to tell you right now, if it was bigger, he could screw himself right in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> don't let, don't, and don't let JC see that mushroom head. He might try to smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Gianni's comments. <laughs> oh, and see, this is the best part of it for me. I laugh at these fools. They start in with all that insult and crap. It's why I don't even get into it with them. Because, I, I, to be honest with you, I think it's more fun to expose fools and laugh at them. Because it drives them fucking nuts. Absolutely well, drives them out of their minds. Well, you can't mess with JC because he has six snipers deployed 300 yards from his house. Well, yeah. You got to watch those snipers. And they're all named, and they're all named Ray Mundy. <laughs> 300. <laughs> <laughs> Donald, one a dollar ninety nine. T muscle. Hey, Donald, I bet you can't send me ten of those and say it ten times in a row. <laughs> oh. They are nice tracksuits, but JC's was not. No. He probably pulled it out of the closet from high school. I don't know about track suits. I've, the only thing I've ever worn was t-shirts, jeans, and biker boots. That's it. Imagine JC is the ambassador and negotiator between the cartel and U.S. dealers sitting at the poolside with Don uh, Eladio uh, smoking cigars and drinking glasses with uh, Don Don Julio. <laughs> hey, that's something I've got to ask you while I'm here. Rammy! What is with you and Rami? Is that serious? Does he really hate you, or what's the story? You know, you know, you may have not notice this, but I have that effect on my people. Either like me or hate me. Now, Romney is funny because Rom Romney's problem was he got mad at me one day because he was talking shit, and I and I went uh, uh, and I, I was on the show with SoFlo, and I yelled "Free Palestine." <laughs> <laughs> You asshole. No wonder why he's pissed off at you. Jesus. Of all things to say, Lee. Now, surely to God, you did not freaking mean that. Of course I not. I know you. No, oh, my God. No, no. Oh, God. No, you he was, asshole. He was down in the chat room going, fuck you, Lee Cole. Fuck you. And then I said, free Palestine. Oh, oh my God. no. Oh, wow. No, that- you you find your weakest point and go at it. <laughs> yeah, but cow dog, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Look at him. He wants he wants to kill me. Yeah, if you if you if you want somebody to hate you from Israel, that <laughs> yeah. is the quickest way to do it. I'll <laughs> and all of a sudden I started getting oh. these, these people from Palestine saying, Thank you, thank you for supporting us. Lee is a, a true shit disturber. That is for 
without question. Tell oh, my God. Palestine. I had no idea that was what was said. That's Holy what shit. Was. I yelled pre-Palestine. Because I was telling Rami, he's like, uh, you know, I told him, I says, ah, you got to, you know, chill with Lee. Lee's all right. You know, don't, don't go at Lee. And he's like, fuck Lee from Bensonhurst. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Cole. And you know what? Oh, man. I, gotta honest, I gotta be honest with you. I don't dislike him at all. No, he's oh god, it's right. You like the chicken, Lee? Yeah, actually, <laughs> he, he's funny when he the way he goes at me is funny. I, oh you know, god, I, dude! I, I, there's certain people that can go at me. It doesn't bother me. Right, he's one of those right. Guys that yeah, don't I, me. he he's a hell of a fella, man. He's just he's one of them world peace dudes. He, you know what I mean? But when he I, when he hears something like that. <laughs> Becky O did a video the other day, a 20 minute video where she. What did you it. do to her? Exactly. Anyway. No, she thought I did something that I didn't do. No, what happened is she, <laughs> she came up on this show the other day and I told her I didn't want to fight or argue. And then she wanted to change the subject. I knew it was going to be uh, lead to a fight. So I, I booted her off. And 10 minutes later, <laughs> she's doing a show. I didn't watch it. So I watched it today. I laughed my ass off. And at the end, so t this morning I wrote, Good job. This is funny as hell. And underneath, she put a big smiley face. So, ah, good, good. I'm glad. Uh, okay, good. No, it's it's how people, who they are to do, the, like FBS and so forth. When they say stuff to you, they're being angry and mean. And I have, and once again, Becky O, I have no issues with her whatsoever. And if she wants me to apologize, I'm sorry, even though I didn't say that remark. She said something about me saying that she's walking around with a vibrator in her vagina. I didn't say that. <laughs> it was Benoit ball. It was Benoit balls. Get it straight. Oh, God. <laughs> but she came no. she, did a, she, did a, she did a show the other day, and she had her shirt open, her bra hanging out. And I'm like, this girl knows how to get a crowd. Becky O is her own personality. That's for sure. And she's but not she, a bad-looking woman. But she likes me, and I like her. And, you know, I mean, I just try and get along. With everybody. <laughs> I don't know. Lee gets himself into a lot of trouble that's unduly needed. Yeah. Hey, Lee. Like, like the gene thing. I knew where that was going. but sometimes Oh, God. The minute I part. seen it, I was like, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was Gene's, like, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> I thought, I thought was gonna, it's like people say to me, Lee's all about the views. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Yeah. You know, what, whether you like Gene Barolo or not, one thing Gene Barolo does is get you views. I don't know what it is because he's crazy than a bed bug. Well, he's a good talker. You know, he, hey, he, he, hey, he Lee, talks some did, shit. People yeah, like what did, that. What did Johnny Mac do to code? He exposed his penis. It was a total exposure of his penis. Oh, yeah. Johnny Mac absolutely, without question, shredded him. It was like, wow. I mean, so, I dude. mean, when he got that girl to post that stuff, that was a mind blower. So, People I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, Lee, I've got to take off. Dinner's about no done, but uh, I enjoyed down, coming man. on. And that guy that wants to see my DD214, get a hold of me and I'll send you the address well, of that when, burger when, when king. When are you going to be on again, my man? Oh, boy. I don't know. As soon as somebody pisses me off, which I'm okay. sure won't well, be long. To the guy, that guy that wants to talk to him, go on his show next time he comes up. You know, that's it. You know, yeah. and do it like a man. Don't do it yeah. like a bitch. Yeah, you're welcome to come. Okay, my well, man, you take care. Have a nice one. My brother, have a good night. You too. I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye-bye. So what do you think, people? Has it been fun so far? Okay, let me read some of these remarks that you guys have up here. And I'm going to drop the invite if anybody wants to come up. end of the month today's the last day of the month so if you want to donate to me you can i'm not going to stop you uh quite a few people donated earlier and i appreciate that and i also know i got some cash apps if you don't have it it's not a big deal but i just like to thank those people that have donated thank you very much Paul Kalanchi, just uh, FaceTime. It's today. It's your, your way face to face. YouTube usually debates because information. Yeah, okay. We talked about jo John, Johnny Mac just destroyed him, Ryan. He, he he destroyed him. It was, I can't say otherwise. He just destroyed him. 
JC went all out on his Reebok. Yes, everybody keeps talking about his damn tracksuit. Okay, Gianni Catalano came here wearing tracksuits since I was two years old. A lot of guys have that are near that life. Code is the only man that can pass around corners. That's a penis joke. JC's a woman beater, just like the rest, but rest of the mob tube. There's a whole lot of them, Ian. There's a whole lot of them here. Donald, thank you for being here today. Kid Rock, JC is so dumb that when he falls off the roof, he doesn't, he, he don't call a lawyer, okay? You know what, people? I've been on two hours. I don't want to, I can't stay on longer than that. I just don't have it in me. I lose my little zap and energy. I'm an older guy. I remember that. But I want to thank all you people. I got 295. I'm closing the show at 295 in the house. And I just like to thank every one of you. I like to thank whoever donated to the show. And any of the money apps that have been sent to me, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Everybody have a nice night. Uh, and we have a new month coming up. I have some good videos coming up that I already, I already made. And please go to my wrestling channel. And uh, James Proctor and I do a show over there. And we've been, I, wait, uh, we've taken like about maybe a week and a half off because uh, James has got sick and uh, there's been a lot going on over here. So please go to Sub to the Wrestling Channel. It's called Lee Cole. It's called uh, Lee Cole's Podcast. I'm sorry, Wrestling with the Devil, a Lee Cole podcast. Um, Wrestling with the Devil, a Lee Cole's Please go over there, sub to it. We do a lot of, about crime in the wrestling world, uh, things that have happened, killings, beatings. Uh, we, we, we look at the very dark side of wrestling. And we put up some stuff sometimes where it's just fun stuff. But anyway, thank you, everybody. I appreciate everybody being here. Take care and have a nice night.